You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. time began because he already had a counsel and a purpose in your heart please don't cut the flow understand how the spirit works prior to your birth he had a plan in his heart he knew why you had to be born prior to your creation he had a plan in his heart he knew why you had to be born. He is the wisdom before time began. The wisdom that will carry you to your destiny before you were even born. That wisdom. You know why people end up casualties of destiny? Because they didn't find the wisdom of God for their life before time began. Before time began. God sat down and conceived an idea and a plan in his heart. Many people are alive, walking outside the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is not the letters, the knowledge, or the, 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 uh, you know, the letterness of God. No, that's not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is the plan, the preconceived idea of God in his heart before time began. Before time began. That thing God taught inside of his heart and said, this is the reason for why this person should be born. Is the wisdom of God. Life will be fruitless and life will be futile without that wisdom. The worst place to be is outside the wisdom of God. You can be anything you want to be outside the wisdom of God. And have anything you want to have and you think you can join life outside the wisdom of God. You can dress the way you want to dress outside the wisdom of God. Life will be meaningless. What is the wisdom of the manufacturer who produces this thing? What is the wisdom of the manufacturer? That people will be able to communicate with these devices. Is that correct? Eh? They'll be able to make calls. They'll be able to send SMSs, exchange emails, and do other transactions with this. Any day this thing stops functioning like that, the wisdom of the manufacturer for the creation of this thing has been defeated. The wisdom of the manufacturer for the creation of this phone is everything that makes this for what it is. When this phone begins to function differently from its creation, it has lost and defeated the wisdom for the creation, the wisdom of the manufacturer. One of the things the devil is doing to people is to defeat the purpose of God for their life. Unfortunately, I wish this was going on video camera. But when people don't function in the wisdom of God, they abuse even... I went to school, I read, I studied. When I found the wisdom of God for my life, it made all the difference. It is the wisdom of God that makes the difference in a man's life. Anyone you see living a fulfilled life. Hmm? Fulfilled life is not the one that has money and cars, no. There are people who have that, they are empty. I've met many. They have car, they have money, they have written, but they are empty. They are still looking for the meaning of life. Because nothing can give your life meaning like the wisdom for the creation of life. The wisdom behind the creation of your life is what gives it meaning. What gives meaning to a pen? Okay, this microphone, what gives meaning to it? If I turn off this mic and start trying to do hello, hello, hello. It's called microphone. This one is also called telephone. 
they have phone in it, but they don't do the same thing. So if I do, hello, 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 hello. You know what I've done? Foolishness. This is foolish. Is that attitude is an attitude of foolishness? It's foolishness. So trying to use microphone to do hello, hello. Say if you see a person doing that, you say this guy is foolish. Is either he's mad or he's foolish. Have you seen that before? Eh? Okay. Have you seen somebody trying to use maybe power bank? He wants to lit a stove and he takes power bank and I just turn on. Guy, turn it now on. When you come close, I think you know you'll be observing the guy like this. Like this guy is mad. This guy has colomentado. You will call that foolish act. So wisdom is not about just knowing book. Wisdom is not about being able to speak intelligently. That's not wisdom. Wisdom is finding yourself at the center of God's plan for your life. That's wisdom. So I was created to be a telephone. I function like that. I was created to be a, a, a whatever it is I'm created to be. I function like that. I don't function opposite of my the thing is that most people don't know just like I gave it okay look at this one this is water bottle water imagine I use this thing now and begin to I go to a football pitch and I set it and begin to play it you look at me what will you say this man is foolish this man is foolish it's easy to recognize foolishness with every other object. Sometimes it's difficult to recognize foolishness with the way we live our life. Most times that's the one people don't recognize. They can tell that, oh, this thing is bottled water. It's meant to be consumed. It's meant you, 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 you are meant to drink it. Oh, somebody can tell, this is cheer. You are meant to sit on it. Somebody can say, oh, that is car. You're meant to drive it. Imagine after service now, I get to my car. And I tell two guys, come to the front. Two guys in the back. I say, I jack the car. Let's be going home. And we carry the car like that and be going home. The car can move. Oh. There's nothing wrong with it. But we carry it. And we are all sweating. We carry it. We reach home. We say, nah, eh, this car is too heavy. Let's carry it again. Let's carry it. We'll still reach home. And when we get home, they will say, ah, how did you guys reach home? We say, we drove in the car. Won't somebody ask you to go and see a psychiatrist? Something is wrong with you. Do you realize that there are many who live their life like that? The way you will see is foolishness to carry a car that you should drive. That's the same way many people are living their life outside. There's some people. Hmm. Lift up your hands, say, Father. Help me find the wisdom for my destiny, for my calling, for my future, for my creation. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, you may have your seat. Let me start with this opening scripture. Proverbs chapter 19. Then let's look at verse 21. Or let me even start from verse 20. Are we ready? Now, anything that drains energy from you easily, or anything that makes you get weak easily, explains that you have not yet found your purpose. Your purpose is the energy and the fuel you need for your future. The energy, the fire that you need to fulfill your destiny is tied in your purpose. When you find your purpose and you embrace your purpose, you know what happens? You will be two for seven on fire. That's why you see the knowledge of your purpose comes from knowing God. It comes from knowing the scripture. This Bible is your greatest wisdom. Because that's the word of God. That's where the wisdom of God is contained. So I want you to be on fire this morning. Is that okay? Are we together here? Lift up your hands. Father, your fire will fall in this service. I declare that your fire will fall in this service. Everyone will become agents of change in their generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 19. We are looking again at verse 20. And then 21. Listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end you will be counted among the wise. 
I'm reading from, from New Living, from New International Version. He said, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Then look at verse 21. That's my major emphasis. Many are the plans in a person's heart. Many are the plans in a person's heart. Many are the plans in a person's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Sometimes when you are dealing with people who don't understand purpose, they mess up things. One short clip, one short clip can travel the way to a place where somebody is dying and he can revive and resuscitate that person. One short clip. Just one minute video. I've seen many. There's a story ahead. Somebody was about committing suicide. Just suicide. All along, this person had a ringtone of a particular message in his phone. In her phone, rather. The ringtone has been playing all day. Anytime they call, it will play. She didn't know that there was a message for her life in that ringtone until the day she wanted to commit suicide. While she was about to take that sniper and die, the phone began to ring. And then it was the same ringtone she had. And she was hearing a message in it. Don't give up yet. There is a beautiful life ahead of you. That's a ringtone. She has been hearing it all the while. She didn't know. The day she was about to die, that phone rang again. And the Holy Spirit breathed on that same word. And that lady threw that poison away. And she saw how beautiful her life would be. And the devil wanted to steal her life and condemn her to death and destroy that future. When you're dealing with people who understand destiny, there's a way they are. They don't trivialize anything. They know that eh, even a pin of information can change a whole generation. One pin of information can set a whole generation on fire and change it completely. One pin. When you're dealing with people of destiny, even the way they pray, change. A media guy will be on the camera. As he's recording, he's praying in the Holy Ghost and saying, Father, this message my pastor is preaching. Let it change everyone who will watch it. Let it transform everyone who will watch it. He's cutting clips. As he's watching it, he, he, the Holy Spirit is telling him, cut this part out. Broadcast it. Cut this part out. Share it. Cut this one. Because he's not working out of the wisdom of God. He knows that this thing can transform a whole generation. So he's sensitive. He's sensitive. There's a compound where I am. I found that that compound has a high level number of bad boys, Igbo smokers are there. Even this morning, I was driving down to church. I left my major house for some people. When I was driving down to church, I found out that they had woken up this morning and they are drinking and they are smoking Igbo. Not just cigarette, smoking. And I was taking my things, they come, my heart caught. I said, Lord God, Lord God. My heart caught again. And as I was entering, I said, Lord, how do I get these guys? How do I change these guys? This thing is giving me a headache. Do you know the wisdom I found? Do you know the wisdom I found? The Lord said to me, have you not observed since you came to this compound, it's one of the dirtiest areas you've ever seen. The, the, everywhere is in litters. The stairways, the staircase up, if you see death everywhere, then the compound, that's it. And the Lord said, after this program, tomorrow, take broom. In the morning, as all of them are coming, sweep the whole compound. He said, don't employ anybody to do it. Anybody who wants to join you amongst your sons, no problem. He said, but you carry broom, sweep everything, sweep everywhere, sweep it, sweat. You know what's going to happen? Is as you're doing it, these guys know you are a big man of God. These guys know that you are highly elevated. As you're doing it, they will begin to wonder, what is this thing this man is doing? He's a visitor here. Why is he cleaning all the place? When you finish doing that and you tell them good morning, they will need and say, good morning, sir. We tell them, can we talk? They will say, please, our three years, not even two, our four years are open. It's called the wisdom of God before the time began. Don't live useless lives. There are many people living very useless lives. They are in a place, they can't see what's going wrong there. 
because if we raise a generation like this this is how you change an entire city oh God the things I want to tell you this morning do you know God's plan God's plan for creating the whole world is to is to and creating man also okay let me tell you God has two major plans God created the world the earth so the earth can be a reflection and an extension of heaven then he created man so that man will be an extension of himself and the same thing that God is doing in heaven is what God wants man to be doing on earth so what I'm saying is this God in his wisdom did not create man to just exist you see the Lord's prayer eh? our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven you see that prayer that second part thy will be done on earth as it is the biggest thing in the heart of God so every day I wake up that prayer is in my heart because I know each day God wakes up in heaven what he's doing in heaven is to create an atmosphere where the life is superior where the life is excellent where who things or where the saints or the citizens of heaven are living very superior lives they are living excellent quality lives I understand the transactions that goes on in heaven I know the kind of activities that go on in heaven so because I'm an ambassador of heaven and I'm on the earth I understand what we as Christians or as, as kingdom ambassadors are meant to be doing on the earth I understand it God is a transformational God He doesn't leave anything the way He met it If you, you guys if you allow me to mentor you guys and raise you guys if you see the kind of Christians you guys will be the church will return back to glory and dominion if you see the kind of Christians you guys will be Religion is now one of the biggest challenges the world has. Because religion can transform the earth. God did not send Jesus to come and die so he can give us a religion. And make us high and high and look pious. No! The essence of Christianity is to raise kingdom ambassadors. Christ's representatives. Kingdom representatives. People who can represent heaven on earth. People who can represent God on earth. That's why anything I'm doing, I do with this consciousness. I dress with this consciousness. I drive with this consciousness. I build with this consciousness. Anything I'm doing. I do knowing that God is depending on me to depend to himself. God is depending on me to influence a generation to him. If I were a student, for instance, on campus, in a faculty, I don't need Bible, I don't need any suits to come and preach to save people. It's the light of God that I shine there that will compel people. It's the salt that I bring to that community or that environment that will compel people. So you need to find yourself now in the center of God's will and in the center of God's wisdom. You can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be an engineer. All that is good. But God wants to use those professions and communicate his kingdom to men. And communicate his purpose to men. And communicate his plans to men. That's why you need to be in this kind of church. And that's why you need to sit down in this kind of church. Because the idea is not to do religion as usual. The idea now is to train ambassadors. Agents of transformation. Agents of change. Do you see, without even preaching the Bible, I've already transformed a whole compound. When I come out in the morning, the idea is smoking up and drinking. And the sense is everywhere. I don't criticize you see, I greet them. Good morning, sir. All of them. They enter my car and drive. And my heart will be panting. These guys, they can't die and go to hell. It is a taboo that I'm in that environment and I cannot influence that environment. It's a taboo. Then you should check whether you are salt or saltless. Because God said, Jesus said, You are the salt of the world, the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its symbol, it cannot.
cannot be used for anything. You throw it away. How I test my saltiness, how I validate that I am potently salty, is what I'm able to do with human beings in an environment. If I were a law student and I had 1,000 students in faculty of law, I wouldn't test my ability to influence or my ability to be salty how much I pass my course alone. That's not it. I would test my ability and capacity to salt that environment by how many people I'm changing. How many people who look at my life and they say, we want to be like this lady, we want to be like this man. Don't be in an environment and be counted in the midst of the multitude. Be in an environment and be counted out of the multitude. That's how we know that your life (laughs) don't be lost in the crowd. Single yourself out and become a leader for other people. Become a pace setter for other people. When they see you, let them know the guy in charge of this environment has shown up. Not in charge because you make all the noise. No. In charge because once you come in, people start behaving themselves. This is what it means to understand purpose. This microphone is on. It's talking now. That's purpose. The mic knows the intention for its creation. It's so it can generate sound. Amplify voices. That's the purpose of the mic. It's fulfilling its purpose. And it's intentionally fulfilling its purpose. Yesterday, prayer was going on. Some people were impacted by the Holy Ghost. Things was happening. Some people were... I stood there while my friends were laying hands on people. All I was doing was, Holy Ghost, where are the generals you want to raise him? I will find... I, I call someone and say, see that one, pick him. See that one, pick her. See this one, pick her. See that one, pick her. See this guy, pick him. See this one, pick him. Mark them. These are dangerous people. I want to raise them for God's glory. Why am I doing that? Because purpose makes you intentional. When you understand purpose, you are intentional about everything. You, you even relate to people intentionally. You discover people intentionally. When there's no purpose, you do things anyhow. Do you know as I'm talking to you now? I'm not just talking. I'm even discovering people. No. The way you're even listening, the way you see, the way you post yourself, I'm watching, I'm discovering, I'm... <laughs> you will not fail your generation. I didn't hear that amen purposefully. You will not fail your generation. That thing that will make you obscure in life, I declare over your life, it will go far from you. That thing that will make you end normal in life, I declare over your life, it will be far from you. Please, can you shout that amen with fire? A new crop of leaders is what God wants to raise now. In the body of Christ, a new crop of leaders, a new crop of generals, both men and women. Just settle down and let this training happen. Who you will be, who you will be, what you achieve. Religion is the biggest weapon the devil uses to destroy destinies. Religion. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Religion. have reduced Christianity to a style of dressing. So when I dress religiously, I'm a Christian. That is not it. Do you know I can be naked and still make him part? Now I'm not saying that I will go naked. I'm not saying you should go naked. But I'm telling you, it's not how pious you dress that makes you the light of the world. It's the problems you solve. The problems you help God solve. Let me give you an illustration and I'll read you one or two scriptures. Then we'll get into something. Watch. When God finished creating the whole world and then he created Adam. Do you know what God told, told Adam? Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. After he said let us make man in our image and let them have dominion. He, 
mentioned that they should have dominion over the air, over the sea, and over the earth, everything that creeps on the earth. Hmm? After God had finished making them and charged them to have dominion, there were some things in creation that God did not finish. So he now allowed man the privilege of continuing creation. For instance, one of the things God did was He did not mention, He did not name all the animals. He didn't even name one. He created all the animals, but He now said to Adam, "Take all of them and name them. Anything you call these animals is what they will be." Adam was the one that named the goats, not God. Adam was the one that named the, the lion. Adam entered the sea and named all the aquatic life, all the aquatic creations inside the sea. Why, why did God do that? Did God do that? God was trying to show man, this is why you were created, to be co-creators with me. This is why you were created, to be part and parcel of those that solve problems. This is why you were created, to be part of those that make their society a better place. This is why you were created. You are not created to just be a tongue-speaking person. That's the, a good way to start. That's the way we get you incubated with God. But beyond that, you were created to be an influencer of your world, to be a changer of your world. As a student, for instance, those of you who are students in school, when you start asking questions like, what do I do to make this campus better than I met it? That's when you have started becoming the kind of Christian that God the kind of Christian. What do we do to solve the problems in our community, the problems in our world? Do you do you know there are people who are victims of rape? Who is training the men? There are men who are almost like beasts. They see a girl, the only thing they see is a girl to rape. They start planning how to tear the girl's clothes and rape her forcefully. Who is going to come up with a dream to help the young men rediscover manhood? These are the things God wants to see the church start doing. Christians, this is your calling. You are studying law, my love. Do you know how many prisoners you have in the prison? You know what I found that people go to school to study and they don't know the purpose of what they are studying. They study the law, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a chapter of church in your faculty there. Law faculty. That would be And I'm going to pastor the whole law faculty. I just want to pastor law. There. Because there's a problem in our world that if we train the, the law students now, train the lawyers now, we will solve a lot of issues. Let me give you one problem. Our prisons are exploding with criminals. If you go to the Abakiki prison here, you wonder that these human beings are packed here like this. They pack human beings like bags of Gary. Then you ask. You notice there are different categories of people there. One category are people who were unlawfully detained. Unlawfully in prison. They are not guilty of the crime they say they committed. But they put them there. Maybe because they were not able to get a lawyer to speak for them. They couldn't defend themselves. So they ended up there. And some have been there 15 years, 20 years. They are, they are not guilty of that crime, but they sentence them to prison. Because when judges lose compassion and mercy, they become terror. They become wicked men who oppress the poor. There are many who are in prison. They are not guilty of what they did because of unrighteous judges. Illuminati judges. Illuminati magistrates, they are everywhere. Wicked men who have no plan for the good of society. They use them to oppress people. So somebody wants to collect properties. Maybe his, his brother died and left the properties. What billions and the wife, her hair is not a threat. The guy comes and then use one judge or one lawyer and twist documents and twist things. And they collect the thing oppressively from the world. There are cases like that. Injustice everywhere. 
see the last election, for instance, Peter, how many of you voted during the last election? You voted? Oh, some of you didn't vote. You are part of the problem. But how many of you know Peter? How many of you wanted Peter to be president of Nigeria? How many of you wanted him to be president? But he didn't become. But he won the election. Are you aware he won the election? Are you aware he won it? But they used the umpires like INEC. They used the Supreme Court. They used the different courts. Used money to bribe these guys. And finally they took the mandate from him and gave it to Tinibu. Now let me show you something. There was a case of a certain professor woman who was the returning officer. Have your state. Uh-huh, I like him from the you, know. you You heard that story of the woman who they tried to bribe her professor, one of the VCs of one of the universities. They tried to bribe her to change the results against Pitobi and give credit to Tinubu. The woman said she will not try. They said, we are giving you billions of money. See, we can create your account with anything you want. Just do it. The woman said, no way. They now had a threat. If you don't, it will kill you. The woman said, it's better I die for a just cause than live for an unjust cause. She was the only woman in the whole country that said she will not try it. They brought jeeps, brought money. She said to her with them. He said, as long as she's a returning officer here, that the right thing will be done. She won't utter one result. Prosperity will be kind to that woman. Imagine we have a church like this, for instance, where you have raised such people. They are governors, they are judges that will stand on the truth. Now these are the things they won't teach you in the four walls of the school. They will teach you practice, the theory, the procedures. They will teach you the, the way to do litigation. They will teach you all the mediations. They will teach you all the conciliation. They will teach you everything. The international jurisprudence. They will teach you criminal code, criminal law. They will teach you everything. But they will not teach you God's scepter of righteousness. God's scepter. They won't teach you the real advocacy. Kingdom advocacy. They won't teach you the real kingdom social justice. It's not the Bible that says, Blessed are the merciful. They won't teach you mercy. That's why church becomes the most formidable platform where you retrain the heart of people, where you retrain the culture of people. And then, even if they go into the secular system, they go there with godly system inside of them. With kingdom system. They are working in Babylon, yes. But like Daniel, they are doing the will of God there. They are working in Egypt as Joseph, the prime minister. But they are doing the will of God. The will of God. They know they didn't become prime minister because it's a secular career. They only use the secular career as a platform to carry God's kingdom agenda out. Your career is only a platform to carry God's purpose. Your career is not your purpose. Do you know pastoring is not my purpose? I got into pastoring is a platform. That's why there are pastors and there are pastors. I got into ministry to use ministry as a platform to reach the world. There can be other ways to reach the world apart from even plat- apart from the platform of pastoring. You can use lecturership to reach the world. And some of you here, you shouldn't even graduate and be looking for which microphone to go and carry and be preaching. Some of you is lecturership, and you're not going to do it because you want to earn a living. What is calling you to lecturership is the problems you have seen with young people. And you know, if I get a platform and I'm a lecturer and I develop myself, become a professor and contest for VC ship every week, Monday will be a special day in that university where everybody converge to meet with God. And they are not just converging to come and pray. That is the special day you come down to pastor a whole university. Imagine a university that has about 25,000 students. They paid school fees to come and learn. They paid for their hostel. Just one 
memo or one announcement the VC says, I want to see all the students of this university at the university hall. You don't need to preach about it. You don't need to beg. Everybody will come because everybody wants to graduate. Just put penalty. Just put one small penalty there. Is anybody who misses this, you will get a carryover. I hope you know church to a lot of people. Church is very mm, mm, not the way you are dealing with your lecture. Hmm? You see the way some people can come to church later; they don't mind. Are you seeing it? No way you are dealing with your lecture. He says the class is 7 a.m. If you come five minutes past seven, you are not entering this class and I will draw 10 marks from your. How many of you will not be in class by five o'clock? <laughs> you see, the platforms out there are even more formidable. The only problem is that the people who are manning them are the wrong people. Sometimes I wish I can divide myself into one million. Imagine I was a VC of a school. Hi. I don't need to do evangelism. Just being VC has given me the multitude. I don't need to. Which evangelism am I doing? If I want to build halls, classrooms, I will build it purposely. How many students do we have? 35,000 students. Oh, okay. I just go and find one free land in the university and develop a stadium there. I'll roof the stadium. They will ask, what are you building? I'm building a, a, I'm building a convocation center where they can carry all the students. Uh, you understand the language convocation, but me understand this transformation. If you want to clap, 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 clap well. I know it's not just convocation, it's transformation. So every week or every month, I target them. Before exam, it's not this one, the exam is uh, on the 16th and everybody's running kitty kata, kitty kata, no. Three weeks to exam, I will take four days and do an academic excellence and professional career success seminar. Then I would develop the courses out as a VC, I'll be the one to teach. If I have lecturers who have a sound mind, it's not the one who are coming to teach law, no one I'm looking for. It's the one who are coming to teach the concept of a sound mind. The ones who are coming to teach academic excellence, not all these things they teach you in class. They finish teaching you, some people are still battling with lack of sound mind. Some still don't know how to read and understand. Hmm? Imagine VC. During exam, three weeks to exam, I hold a compulsory three days seminar or conference in that convocation arena and all the 35,000 students appear then I go and bring some very key facilitators from even America, I can even bring Bill Gates you are very foolish leaders in the system as a VC I can have the, I have the power I have the connection I have the everything, I can link up with Mark Zuckerberg I can link up with Bill Gates I can link up with some very prominent people who have excelled and bring them to the university once in a while and gather the whole crowd in that convocation three weeks to exam and we are doing preparation for the exam, I'm teaching how to pass this exam I'm teaching how you can read and understand I'm teaching other things then I now bring Bill Gates, please come and teach us on vision how to develop a system how to develop companies I now bring Mark Zuckerberg, I tell you your own topic is teach on life after graduation I bring me Bungo Sokonji Come and teach on how to excel in career Then at the end of the day I now summarize it with the move of the spirit Now summarize it with the Holy Ghost with the, As VC Flowing in this charismatic anointing when I'm done, release everybody back to their class. Nobody will fail. Lecturers today want to victimize their students because they didn't sleep with them. They want to victimize their students because they didn't greet them. They want to victimize them because they want to make money, exploit money from them. That's not the kingdom of God. When you see things like that, if you're a kingdom person, you know God's kingdom has not begun to reign on the earth. This is not the way God designed the earth.
That's why in this church, see what we do. Let me tell you what we do. We don't just preach sermons here. We don't just um, hide people. As powerful as they are, we do them. But we train. We're intentional about you. We're intentional about your calling. We're intentional about how you emerge. We're intentional about your becoming significant. Religion can raise people. Religion can train people. Religion cannot transform people. Only the kingdom can do that. Okay. Can I now read you one scripture? And we close. Look at that 21. Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in a person's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So what prevails? What prevails? What excels? Hello, are we here together? Eh? So any day you wake up and say, I want to prevail, I want to excel, I want to excel, I want success. Listen, nothing succeeds outside God's purpose. Nothing prevails outside God's purpose. Read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Anyone you see that ever became successful, or that ever became great, or that ever became significant, Every one of them were people who hooked up to God's purpose. For instance, Joseph. For instance, Esther. Deborah. Daniel. Moses. Anyone you can think of. All of them excelled because they hooked up to the purpose of God. So they said, many are the plans in the heart of a man. There are many people with different plans, different goals, different dreams, hmm? different agenda, different cravings, different... Um, eh? If I ask you guys now what you want to be, what you want to achieve, you will see the kind of things you will start saying, very, very big things. Some of you will be talking, I want to be this, I want to be that. And God is in heaven listening and he's saying, all these things these people are saying, which one is my own purpose in it? Hello, somebody... God is asking, which one is my own purpose in all these things they are saying? I want to be a doctor. Eh? Wanting to be a doctor is not purpose. I want to be a lawyer. Wanting to be a lawyer is not purpose. I want to be a musician. No. Wanting to be a musician is not purpose. Hello, somebody. I want to be a senator of the Federal Republic. Wanting to be a senator is not purpose. The right way to want to be anything is to find the purpose behind what you want to be. What is the purpose? What is the purpose? God does not do anything without purpose tied to it. He does not. No manufacturer creates anything without purpose tied to it. Good morning, ma. Let's appreciate the presence of Mama. Let's appreciate the apostle. Thank you. Come with your book and pen. What are you holding, sir? A book and a pen. What if I tell you don't write with this book? Any day you want to write, just use your hand and be writing on your forehead. Take notes on your forehead. Is it possible? So this thing is a book. He wants to take notes. He writes inside the book with his pen. The purpose of this book is for note taking. The purpose of this pen is to write. Once this book loses that purpose, it's useless. What makes this book relevant and useful is the purpose it serves. Hello? When God created you, God bless you. When God created you, before he did that, there are questions he asked in his heart. There are questions he asked. No manufacturer Create a product without understanding why first. He must first satisfy that answer. Why are we creating this? Everything you see in life is a response to a need somewhere. There was a time men could not speak effectively. Somebody saw that problem and he said, no, 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 no. We need to create a microphone that will enable people to speak audibly. Nobody just woke up and said, I feel like creating. Mm-mm. No manufacturer feels like creating to create. 
every manufacturer creates because there is a problem he wants to respond to. Oh, somebody just woke up and said, oh, I feel like developing aircraft. No. The knowledge of a problem precedes the creation of solution. Nobody wakes up and begins to create solution to something he doesn't know the problem. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? As I'm talking to you now, there are people in labs developing and testing vaccines for the cure of HIV AIDS. Eh? If there was no AIDS, nobody would put his brain to the table to find the solution to it. Hmm? There was a time nobody was thinking about malaria drugs because there was no malaria anywhere. But the moment malaria began to ravage lives, we began to create malaria drugs. Before 2019, nobody was thinking of COVID-19 drugs or COVID-19 vaccines. After the outbreak of coronavirus and COVID-19, everybody is now thinking of, how do we find a permanent cure to this thing? It is the knowledge of a problem that precedes the creation of a solution. So let me announce to every one of you here. You are alive because God had knowledge of a problem. And your creation was the response to that problem. If you want to clap, clap well. God found a problem somewhere, like Moses. When Moses was born, you know what God did? Pharaoh had made a law that everyone who is born, the Hebrew children, get them and kill them. But God found a way to preserve Moses. And then he was hid in a river somewhere. And then Pharaoh's other came to take her back and saw this boy and took him away. And went to nurse him. Of course, the sister of Moses, Miriam, followed him. And then called the mother. The mother came and offered to nurse the boy as nanny for the woman. And raised him. God orchestrated all that plan to preserve the life of Moses because of the purpose hanging on his head. The purpose was that the time will come, this same man is going to be the one to deliver the whole, the whole Israelites in Egypt. He's going to be the one to lead them out of this bondage and move them to their promised land. If God didn't have that plan for Moses, Moses' birth was not needful. Your birth will not be needful if God doesn't have a plan. Your creation will not be important if God does not have a plan tied to it. The essence for your creation is because God saw a problem. And he said, you are the one that fits that problem. You are the one that can solve. Me, I know the purpose of my life. I told the Lord, show me whatever it is I'm born for is what I want to live for. I don't want to live for anything outside my calling. The best way to live life is to live it the way you are designed. Is to live it for what you are designed for. Is to live it for the essence for which you were created. That's the best way to live life. The Lord told me audibly. He said, I'm going to give you one billion souls. He said, the majority of them are youth. I have a one million youth agenda for Nigeria. I have a 100 million youth agenda for Africa. I have a 1 billion global youth project. And I am passionate about it. If I don't fulfill that, it looks like I didn't live life. That's so why anywhere I see youth, youth, give me the youth. That's my prayer. Give me the youth of nations. Give me the youth of territories. Give me the youth. Because I know if we fix our youth, we can fix our society. Most of the vices like drugs, abuse. That's why I went to develop myself. I went to school. I didn't go to school because I like to read. I like school. Mm-mm. I went to school to study, develop myself to doctorate and to other credentials that I'm acquiring every day and all that. Because I need to be equipped enough to reach your generation. So when I talk, the message I'm preaching, you can understand it. That's what it means to be in the plan of God. Many are the plans in the heart of man. But you see, the purpose of God, only the purpose of God prevails. So my friend, you want to prevail, find yourself in the middle of your assignment. If you've never asked yourself why you were born, start asking yourself, for what reason was I born? I like that scripture that says For this reason the son of man was made manifest That he may do what? Destroy the works of Satan He wasn't made manifest for any other reason 
he came in the volumes of the books to fulfill that which was written concerning him. That's why in the book of Luke, when he entered the synagogue, he took the scroll, opened the part where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He knew the letter that God wrote for his generation and he came to fulfill it. When he finished reading it, he said to those people in the temple, he said, this day, he said, today, this scripture is now fulfilled in your hearing. He knew why he came. You see, he makes statements like, I must be about my father's business. Now that it is day, he said, for the night cometh when no man shall walk. He knew why he came. So it is difficult to distract people who know why they are here. It's difficult to confuse people who understand their calling and their purpose and their program. It's very difficult. For instance, me, you don't catch me with excuses and laziness. Uh, why didn't you attend this conference? Oh, pastor, you know, I've been so busy with things. Uh, why didn't you attend that training? Oh, pastor, you know, I've been so busy, no time, eh? no time to fulfill destiny. I attend meetings, I buy books, I study, I develop myself. You know why? I know the calling of God for my life. And I know the price it will take to achieve it. If the Martin Luther King Jr. were not born, and beyond just being born, if he did not know why he was alive, maybe the racial problem between the light skin, the white and the black, in America would have persisted till now. If Nelson Mandela was not born, and he didn't know why he was born, maybe by now South Africa would have been ravaged by apartheid. These are people who left their landmarks, left their footprints on the sand of time because they knew for this cause was I born. Which cause are you born for? I end with this scripture. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and that's where I close then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee in the belly of in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations can you see that that God even knows people before they are born hello hello God knows you more than you know yourself God knows you more than your parents know you. God knows you more than your friend knows you. Eh? God is like a director of a movie. Before you were born, he already watched your life play out. Oh. God does not start anything from the beginning. Mm -mm. Everything he begins, he already ended it. God will first end the project, then he comes to the beginning and starts the project. That's why architects first of all finish the house before they build it. Hmm? What they do is they take their pen and paper and structure their the building on the paper. Do the 3D. They put the swimming pool and put everything where it should be. They show you the, the living room, the bedroom, the everything, the kitchen. You see it. Wow, it's beautiful. But can you live inside that 3D picture? You can't live inside it. That 3D picture is only showing you the finishing of what they are about to start. So they start the construction and usually when they start, it doesn't look like what has been finished. But it's a process, it's going there. That finishing is a picture of what that building will look like when they finish it. So you are like a project in God's hand. God is the architect of your life. Before he began you, he finished you. He had you in his palm. He had a picture of the kind of future you will live in. And then he decided that this is the kind of life he wants for you. Then he brought you through a vessel called parents. <laughs> Most times when I see parents trying to control their children, I say, you don't know what you're doing. This guy has an agenda here you don't know this lady has an agenda that you give birth to them doesn't mean you own them God only used you as a vehicle to bring them forth can't you see the way they brought Moses forth can't you see the way they brought Jesus forth God only used Miriam Moses and Joseph as caretakers to help that boy grow but when the guy had grown when he had been nurtured to a certain age 
and it was time for him to enter his destiny, he entered it. His mother and his father lost control and oversight over him. This time, his future must give him direction. His calling must give him direction. His destiny must lead him. So in case you are here thinking you know yourself, you don't know who you are yet. If you see who you are, if you see what God has made you to be, you are not an accident. I did a study of how human beings are born. And the doctor was telling me, he said, before a man releases his sperm to fertilize the egg in the woman's ovaries, he says, usually, when he releases that sperm, he says, usually, there are about six point something million sperm cells that comes out with the semen. The semen is the white watery substance. Hmm? But inside it, they are microscopic objects. You can't see them with your optical eyes. You only see them with the aid of a microscope. He said that when the thing comes out, there are about millions of cells. And these cells are human beings, though. Millions of human beings inside one water. And then all of them begin to run a race to fertilize one egg. Only one can fertilize the egg at a time. All can fertilize. So in God's mind, when you were born, this why I close. When you were about to be born, in heaven they blew a whistle. All your marks get set, go, and all the six million sperms began to run. They began to run, but while they were running, God, whose eyes is always on the earth, looking for whom He will show mercy, was looking through the sperm cells. He was looking through the sperm cells. You think He didn't know you are sperm? He knew your name as sperm. He knew your name as a sperm cell. Somebody hear what I'm saying? They said before you were formed in your mother's view, I knew you and I thank you. Your ordination didn't happen the day you were born. Your naming ceremony was what man was doing to name you. God already named you before you were ejaculated from your father. God called you by a name. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? He ordained you. The ordination we do in church when we pour oil on you and call you a priest or whatever is just a confirmation of what God already did in the mother's womb. He already did it there. And I perceive God held oil in his hand and he was looking. These guys were running. He was looking. These guys were running. He was looking. And angels were assisting him with the oil. And then God saw Elias and he said, this guy looks like the one that if we pour this oil on, a boy's state will be liberated. This other lady looks like the one. If we pour this oil on and we send her into the legal sphere, she's going to rise to become a judge and she's going to judge nations like Deborah. She's going to change nations like Esther. And then God say, Holy Spirit, pour the oil on her. Pour the oil on her. Ordain her immediately. And you guess what? When you will ordain... Every other spell cease to run. They all bowed. Because God proposed you will be the one. Don't abuse your life. There was a kingdom meeting. A meeting happened in heaven. Something serious. A meeting held in the council of heaven that decided you should be alive for such a time as this. Because of a program of heaven on the earth. God saw you and said you are the one to go. You can't reduce your life to bread. You can't reduce your life to normal. Stand your feet and warrior. You can't reduce your life to nothing. You can't reduce your life to just one girl looking for one guy to toast her. Looking for one guy to, to woo her. You can't reduce your life to a housewife. There's more to you than a housewife. There's more to you than just one guy in an office. God planted you there for something great. Bigger than you can even think. Before you were born. I knew you. I'm a prophet to the nations. I feel give me the call. The re- re- preceding scriptures of that same. You see, a, a, J- Jeremiah had a, a complaint. I found out something. Sometimes the people God wants to use are the ones that have the most of complaint. Like Gideon and the least of my family. Nobody knows me. Our clan is the smallest. God, you're looking for a man, and he's here. You want to come? So you've made a big mistake, oh. 
why not go to the military generals and go and raise somebody but listen God he uses the foolishness of this world to confound the wise is somebody hear what I'm saying you may not come from a great background you may not come from the most important places you may not come from the best of families the places people call disadvantage is where God goes and raises an advantage the places people have written off is where God goes and writes his will is somebody hearing what I'm saying here right now don't look down on you Moses had an impediment of speech when God called him he said to God he said God 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 and God said to him, no, 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 no problems. Just go, 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 go like that. Go like that. Everything you need is inside. Everything you need is inside of you. If I'm talking to you, shout yes. Somebody make some noise. You're a man of purpose. You're a man of destiny. You are carrying something on your inside. You are carrying a calling on your inside. Don't let your impediment hold you back. Don't let your limitation hold you back. Don't let your limitation hold you back. You are a world changer. You are a trailblazer. You are a history maker. You are an impact maker. If I'm talking to you, shout it loud. Amen. She was just one maid in the family. Father died, mother died, left to the hands of one young man called Mordecai. And Mordecai had to raise this girl from the scratch, raise this orphan girl. All the who that matters, all the people who matter in that land didn't see her as anything. But the day Messi smiled at her, the day Savor kissed her, the one that everybody had written off was singled out of every other person and brought into the palace. God does not elevate people for nothing. He always has an agenda. He always has a purpose. Listen, God does not promote you to make you feel good. God does not promote you so you can have a great thanksgiving and a great testimony. No. The testimony is that His name be glorified. The testimony is that His agenda and purpose be fulfilled. That's the purpose for your elevation. Esther may have thought God just favored me and made me her excellency. But behind it, God saw a day will come. A man called Haman will conspire against the Jews. And he's going to fight to annihilate them, to wipe them out. So he planted someone in the palace. And when Mordecai came to her, when the king had made up his mind to kill everyone, Mordecai said, do you know if God sent you here for such a time as this? And then when her heart was called back to purpose, she said, go and tell everyone to fast for me. I and my maidens will also fast. And after the fast, I will come into the king to speak with him. If he kills me, no problem. If I perish, I perish. The day purpose downs on you, life will stop to be about you. The things that are built to you will not matter. Whether you have a car or you don't have a car, it won't matter. Whether you have money or you don't have money, it won't matter. The only thing that will matter is the purpose and the will of God. Even at the expense of your life, Revelation says something interesting. And you overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I like the preceding verse. He said, and they love not their lives. They love not their lives. Even unto death, they love not their lives. Because when a man finds his purpose and his calling, his life seems to matter. What now matters is the life of he that has called him. Is the glory of he that has called him. Please, can you read that preceding verse? And that's why I want to close this meeting. Quickly, please, quickly. Let's look at the response of this guy called Jeremiah. Quickly. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 6. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Are you having any excuse why God can't use you? That excuse is a valid statement that you are the one God is looking for. Very valid. In fact, the more excuse you have, the more reason you give us to know you're the one. Everyone, most of the people, God, God, the first run, the first, I don't, I can't, I, I can't. I cannot speak. He said, because I'm a youth. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Well, Lord, you're calling me to be prophet of nations. Can't you see I'm the smallest guy here? See how small I'm looking. I'm just a student in the faculty of law, student in medicine. And you see, I'm the one that will go and redeem this campus. VC has not done anything, then it's me. Yeah. Verse 7. 
But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go and go to all that I shall send thee. So God first altered the way He was speaking. God first changed the way He was saying Himself. God always does that. The first thing God does when He wants to send a man on assignment is to give him a new concept of who He is. He gave Gideon. He said, "You are a mighty man of valor. You are not just the least in your kindred. You are a mighty man. You are a mighty man." He told Moses, I've made you a God before Pharaoh. You're not a cattle rearer. You don't know who you are. You are a God. You are a God before that man. What are you holding in your hand here? He said, it's just a stick. It's not just a stick. Drop that thing. You will see what you'll be holding. When he dropped it, it turned into a serpent. He said, are you seeing? You're carrying something. You don't know. All this while you thought you were a shepherd boy. But you were, you were carrying what it takes to deliver a whole nation. Anyone he meets, he tries to correct that image problem, that self-concept problem, and give him a new orientation of who he is. He meets a Mary Magdalene, who has condemned herself in prostitution and all that. Everybody wants to kill her and stone her. Nothing good can come out of this one. And Jesus said to him, Madam, where are your accusers? He said, they are no longer here. He said, neither do I accuse you. Now go and fulfill your calling. does that a lot. And I feel God is reaching out to somebody and he's saying to that person, you are not poor. You are not from a no background. You are not victimized. You are not disadvantaged. You came for a purpose. Yield to the Lord. Yield to the Lord. And he would use you in ways that will blow your mind. Some of you here, you are carrying capacity to jam stadium. Don't you know that? Stadium jamming pastors are here. Crowd pulling pastors are here. Some of you here are men and women who will walk into government houses and give counsel. You would speak to kings, you would speak to nations, and they would listen to your wisdom, the wisdom of God. But you know what it takes? Just avail yourself. Stop looking at your limitation, your circumstances, where you're from. Father, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Do with me what you want to do. Lift up your hands everywhere you are. Father, we thank you. Maybe you just want to pray in one second. You know, as I bring up, you know, just pray in one second. Just one second. If you want to pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues. Just pray in other tongues. You are the wisdom before time began. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You reign forever. Your name is ever great. It's your wisdom. It's your wisdom. You are the wisdom before time began. You reign forever. You reign forever. Your name is ever great. You are the wisdom. The wisdom.
Another level, another level, another level. Turn it to another man. Turn it to another man. Turn it to another man. Turn it to another woman. If you they touch the room, they touch the new you, but they don't know who you are. You are carrying something for your generation. You are carrying answers for your generation. You are carrying solutions for the problem of the world. You are turned it to another man. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Raising Leaders. Global Leaders.